The Zamorak Warriors didn't drop her in Scimitar. 115 killed and only a bunch of rune daggers. It's a shame. Oh well, the magic XP was nice. Anyway, today we're unlocking fairy rings. There are so many random niche areas in the game with close access to fairy rings or only access by fairy rings, but the laundry list of requirements is pretty long. We get access to the rings partway through the beginning of Fairy Tale 2 Cure Queen, but we don't need the skill requirements to start the quest, only the quest requirements. We need to complete Fairy Tale 1 Growing Pains, Lost City, and Nature Spirit. Nature Spirit is simple, but we need a silver sickle, which requires 18 crafting to make, and Lost City requires 31 crafting anyway, so that's our first goal. So what's the best way to train crafting as a low-level Iron Man? Leather armor, I guess? Well, I'm not doing that. Not when there's quests for me to do. Murder Mystery has no skill requirements, but gives about 1400 crafting XP, the perfect quest to do when starting out. With Quest Helper plug-in, you could pretty much cheat and only need to check the fingerprints of one of the Sinclair's kids. Easy 2k GP and level 15 crafting. Okay, so I do have to make some leather armor, just enough so I can make holy symbols from some silver bars until 18 when I can make silver sickles. Then I made bowstrings from flax until level 20 rather than mining more silver. I was going to Sears Village anyway to start Elemental Workshop 1, so why not? What had completely slipped my mind was that the coal had a level requirement to mine. You spend so much time playing this game, any version of the game, with at least level 35 mining that you kind of forget low level resources have a level requirement at all. It also doesn't help that old schools of mining and smithing level relationships are totally absurd. 15 mining for iron, 35 for coal, 20 defense to wear a steel plate body, and 48 smithing to make one. Say what you will about RS3, the mining and smithing update was pretty good. So rather than training mining the normal way, I headed off to the dig site and started another quest. It gives over 15,000 mining XP, and we'll need to do it eventually anyway if we want Barrow's Gloves anytime soon. Why put it off? This whole thing with digging up artifacts, it's pretty neat. Jagex should consider making this a skill, something involving discovering the past. That'd be neat. We could even use the dig site as a skilling hub or something. It'd be a novel idea. That's 36 mining. Now we can go do Elemental Workshop 1, but first, let's help the museum. That dig site necklace will be really useful when we get started with birdhouse runs. Basically mandatory since getting to Fossil Island any other way would be really annoying. In RS3, cleaning finds is a bit of an arduous process. You can only have one uncleaned find at a time, so you're constantly running back and forth gathering and cleaning. In old school, you can AFK clean all the finds in your inventory. Easy escape, SMH my head. I did get the necklace, but I forgot to record it because I'm an idiot. And Historian Minus gave me an XP lamp, but I'm going to hold on to that for now since you need level 20 in the skill you want to use it on, and I want to use it in Herblore, so we'll just keep that in our inventory for who knows how long. This is going to come up a lot. I'm going to be holding on to a lot of lamps very frequently. Just <laughs> get ready for that. Back to Elemental Workshop. It's kind of funny that we did dig site just to get 35 mining for coal, but you can get coal from cleaning finds, meaning you don't technically need 35 mining, but you still need to do the dig site quest regardless. And from this very short quest, we got 26 crafting and 32 smithing. Took literally less than five minutes once I had all the supplies. Now onto Elemental Workshop 2, which begins in the dig site for some reason. Here's a bit of a warning. If you plan on making a mine shield while doing this quest, make sure you craft the crane claw finger while only having one elemental bar in your inventory. Once you craft it, then smelt the remaining bars. Don't be like me and accidentally craft two claw fingers and have only enough materials left over to make the mind helmet. Could I have gotten more coal? Sure, but like, come on, why why you gotta do this to me, Jagex? Why do you gotta make a game that makes me realize how careless I am? All right, so that quest got us 32 crafting and 36 smithing. Now we've got all the levels we need to do Lost City. In RS3, you have a tool belt, so you don't need to kill the zombies for an ax. But I swear, when I was doing this quest for the first time back in the day, these zombies were both much harder to kill and had a much lower drop rate for an ax. It's a 50% chance, apparently, and yet I recall having to box these guys for so long that I ran out of food and had to run away. Is this new, or have I created a false memory? You know, they say the more you recall a memory, the more it changes. It's like your brain is playing a game of telephone with itself. It's like we only ever really remember the gist of something, and our brain fills in the gaps with things that feel right. Do I remember doing this quest for the first time on a 4x3 monitor? Or do I just know that's what I was using because it was 2006, so my brain throws that detail in as a quote-unquote memory? I want to say I was using Crumble Undead back then instead of Windblast, but is that just my modern brain ascribing knowledge to my past self? Surely I would have wanted to do more damage since I was so worried about this boss fight. I must have been using Crumble Undead, but maybe I actually wasn't. Uh, who could say? I got multiple branches for multiple Draymond staves and extra for the Sir Amic Vars step of Recipe for Disaster. It's always a smart thing to do because otherwise you need to get another axe from the zombies and kill the nature spirit again when you come back at some point in the future. So now we never have to come back here again, hopefully. Now to start Fairy Tale 1, we need 30 farming, or at least I assumed you needed 30 farming. Just now while making this video, I realized the 30 farming requirement is recommended. 
not required. So this whole farming grind that I undertook, you know what I'm about to talk about for a bit, was totally unnecessary. I mean, I need to do it eventually, but I didn't need to do it to get fairy rings. Just to make things easier to summarize, I'm going to continue with a commentary as if 30 farming was a hard requirement. That's what I thought at the time, so let's just pretend my thoughts manifested truth and altered reality. Anyway, up until this point, I've been raking farming patches and making super compost with charter ship pineapples, but it's a paltry amount of experience. It might be good for a few early levels, but that's just about it. I tried the sorceress's garden minigame thing, picking the herbs rather than the squirk fruit. The winter garden gets you 50 XP per pick and two low level herbs. Perfect for training low level herb lore. I got 11 farming from this, but realized real fast how tedious this would be even trying to get to level 15. It's back to quests. The only quest that gives farming XP without having a farming requirement, excluding fairy tale one, but let's pretend that we didn't know that at the time, is the goblin general subquest for a recipe for a disaster. Fortunately, it's a rather quick one, and I already have a use for that purple dye I picked up while doing Hazel Cult. The quest was only worth a thousand farming XP, but it got us to level 15. Two more levels, and we can do Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf for 5,000 farming XP. But first, I went ahead and did the Daddy's Home mini quest. I don't know why, honestly. It has absolutely nothing to do with farming. I guess I just wanted a house without having to pay for one. If only it were really that easy. I ended up getting 13 construction. From the looks of it, Mahogany Home seems like a way less tedious mini game than RS3's version of it. In RS3, you know, I'm not even going to explain what RS3 is. RS3's construction contract thing sucks. It's, it's awful. It is garbage. We'll talk about it more when we get deeper into the construction grind whenever that happens. Okay, enough gimmicks. I need 17 farming, so I just straight up planted some produce. Onions don't give a ton of XP, but XP is XP. While I waited, I decided to train some agility on the Vara course. God damn it, this course sucks. While I waited, I decided to do the jungle potion quest. Easy herblore XP, and it should get us past level 20 so we can get rid of that XP lamp in our inventory. Ow! Dick. Oh my god, that's 11 damage. That's like a third of my health. Get out of here, you freaking cat. I'm dying. With that quest done, and with me holding on for dear life, I got 21 herblore and used that XP lamp to get 22. More farming downtime. Let's help a dwarf get some fish. What's the lore for this vampire? We know Count Draenor is Drakhan's brother, and he was exiled across the River Salve, which explains why he's so much weaker than other vampires. But who the hell is this guy? Is he an actual vampire? Or is he like one of those teens that are really too into anime, so they take on the mannerisms of anime characters? Is he like a weeb, but for Mauritania? Is he a swamp lettuce stand? It's dwarf time. So we hop on a boat, and the captain crashes crashes it into the giant statue of King Alvis, knocking it over. We get brought to Veldabon, worried that we'll be in trouble, and when Veldabon says, Ah, so you're the one who knocked over the statue of our glorious king. Our guy responds with, I suppose so, I mean, I didn't do it on purpose or anything. I remember one time when I took an Uber and the driver totally annihilated every freestanding structure in the city park. Guess it was my fault. Oopsie. Kind of silly when you put it that way, right? Why does our guy accept the responsibility for this even remotely? We were a passenger. It's not like we wrested control for the boat from the pilot and caused the crash. After much consideration and deliberation, I came to the conclusion without any confusion that joining the consortium under the blue opal portion was the best choice since they have the strongest voice. Also, the stairs are like right there. Quick bank access for the delivery boy part of the quest. Bunch of levels from this quest, but we're only here to do forgettable tale of the drunken dwarf. After finishing up the last bit of XP required for 17 farming and making the barley malt, I headed back to Keldegrim and got started with the quest. Fingers crossed that the item the rowdy dwarf wanted me to get wasn't too absurd. Lucky me, he wanted a king worm. It's weird, but hey, who am I to judge? With all the Kelda stout seeds, it's time for the most exciting part of the quest, waiting. Once it grew, we threw it into this brewing vat and waited again. We look like we fighted the spy creatures -ish. And that's the end of the quest line. A cliffhanger, ending with amnesia. They carried it forward in RS3, it's an alright conclusion, I guess. Now that we have 26 farming, we can do Garden of Tranquility. But we need the Ring of Karos, which means doing Creature of Fengenstrain, but getting to Mauritania is such a drag. Having a quick teleport to anywhere beyond the River Sav would be useful. Ah, Ghosts Ahoy. Let's get ourselves an Ecto Vial. Aha! I knew I'd need more purple dye. You see, I grabbed two bottles of dye while doing Hazel Cult. I, however, did not bring a bunch of dyes to Mauritania the first time because I thought it'd be faster to know what dye I needed and only make those dyes rather than making three of each of the primary colors and mixing them in front of the ship. It probably wasn't faster, but 
that's the decision I made. Rune Draw is an interesting game. It's like Blackjack, but a little more spicy. You could probably play it with a single suit of playing cards with the Ace being the Death Rune. Use Spades, so it's more poetic. The Ace of Spades is considered the card of death because magicians love theatrics. In RS3, you can find notes written by Necrovirus explaining exactly how prayer works. It's not communion with the gods, but rather the harnessing of spiritual energies gathered from the dead. When you bury bones or perform funeral rites and whatnot, you gain some of their power and can channel it to gain boons or even conversely create curses. It's technically necromancy. Whether that's accepted into OSRS's lore is a different question. Real necromancy is being added to RS3 later this year, so maybe Necrovirus's claims aren't all that significant. Or maybe it will be. I, I have no idea. They haven't told us anything about what necromancy is going to be like. Like they just said like, oh, there's going to be necromancy, but they haven't explained even a modicum of what it will involve. With Ghosts Ahoy done, the ghosts are now free to leave the physical world, should they so wish. And we also got an Ectovile. It's not the best method of getting to Mauritania, but it sure beats running through Paterdomus every time. I mean, sure, there's the charter ships, but those are less convenient than the Ectovile. Now, Creature of Fengenstrain. Did you know in the original story, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Victor Frankenstein wasn't some crazed doctor sequestered in a tower laboratory castle thing. He was just a 20-something-year-old university student who somehow managed to use chemicals and corpses to bring a dude back to life, and he immediately regretted it. See, the movie was adapted from a play that was adapted from the book, so it's an adaptation of an adaptation. Even in 1931, nothing was original. You know, this used to be the training spot back in the day. Why bring food to fight such a weak enemy? Well, we stole the ring of Karos from the doctor, finishing the quest and letting us move on from Mauritania, at least for a little bit. The Karos lore runs way deeper in RS3 than it does in old school. We don't just meet the guy, but he helps us fight off the Elder Gods. He's a powerful enchanter and mage. He's pretty cool and handsome. Garden of Tranquility is just a waiting simulator. Farming is just a waiting simulator. When I first did this quest, I was babysitting these crops for hours. The smart thing would have been to plant them and then go to the next one and then plant those, go to the next one, plant those, you know, plant them all at the same time. But I was afraid to do that because then what if they died while I was gone? So I was planting one, sitting there and waiting until it finished growing, and then I moved on to the next one. This was also back when logging out during a specific time in the farm tick cycle would screw up how long it would take to grow. And the logout timer was like 30 seconds, so you'd log out basically immediately if you blinked for too long. So even though you're babysitting them, every time you stopped paying attention, probably because you were preoccupied with beating your friend at Super Smash Bros. Melee, you'd log out and reset the farm tech, so you'd have to wait even longer. And it would happen again. It sucked. Hey man, come here. I want to tell you a secret. Come on. I don't bite. At first blush, Rold seems really rude and dismissive of his wife's interests, but damn, she is an abusive partner, both verbally and physically. I'd feel bad for King Rold if he weren't a king and inherently unworthy of my respect as an American. T right into the Pulsarum Hobbit. Nature Spirit, ghosts don't know he a ghost. Once we convince him he indeed a ghost, we need to help him become a nature spirit. So we need some special items to perform the ritual. Something borrowed, something blue, something old, and something new. I, th I think that's what it was. The fungus is new since I just grew it. The used spell is old because it's because it's used. Philemon is borrowing my time, so I'm borrowed. And um, and he's blue. Oh, don't look at me like that. Do, do, do you really think such a contrivance would be out of place for these old RuneScape quests? That is totally logic they would follow for something like this. If you told a spacebar warrior that's what the quest required of you, and that's why you needed those items, they'd really have no reason not to believe you because it sounds runescape enough. Graphic adventure games. Point and click adventure games. They are full of this cockamamie bullshit. Okay, this quest is done. Finally, time for fairies. Fairy tale 1. The most dreadful part of this quest for Iron Men is the set of items you need to get for Malignus Mortifer. First of all, he wanted a skull from Draenor Manor, which I already had because I was thinking ahead. The three items he told me to get, baby dragon bones, an uncut diamond, and a raw caveal. Sounds simple enough, but a raw caveal requires 38 fishing and an uncut diamond. Where even? I guess some random events can reward those, but relying on randoms for my account progression is ridiculous. I'm not a snowflake Iron Man, after all. There's gem rocks in Shiloh Village. Ugh. Let's focus on fishing first. I cut some oak logs, then burned them until I got 30 fire making so I could do the sea slug quest. Over 7,000 XP got me to 33 fishing. Pretty close to 38, and I could power fish near Barbarian Village, but at this stage of the account, trout and salmon would actually be pretty decent food. Banking them would be pretty smart. Wicked smart, even. Where's the closest fly fishing spot to a bank? 
Travel Village. Two birds, one scone, right? You know what's funny? I always think of this quest as really difficult, even though it most certainly isn't. I think it butts up against Legends Quest in my memory, and Legends Quest was certainly a doozy the first time I did it. A lot of the Karamja quests kind of merge together in my brain. They all have a very similar vibe. With the Undead Curse lifted, yeah, that's what this quest is about if you didn't know, I entered Shiloh Village and started fishing. Long enough to get 35, unlocking Temporos. Temporos? My first go at Temporos was a mess because I had no idea what I was doing, and there were like two people in there with me. I was thinking that this was a somewhat dead boss. Or is it in the game? But the next round was bumping. After my first attempt, I got to level 36 fishing, plus about a third of the way into 37. I also got three reward permits. I gotta say, the way the loot is dispensed is kind of odd, but I think I prefer the one by one process more than the everything all at once in nature of Winter Todd. Also, I pulled up a Tome of Water. Super exciting. When charged with pages, it acts as a source of water runes. When using a water based combat spell, a charge is consumed and the spell's damage and accuracy is increased by 20%. However, no charges are used for non-combat spells. For non-combat spells, it's just like a water staff, but you can hold it in your offhand. It'll definitely have its uses once I get some pages. I did Temporos again and immediately got eight pages. <laughs> I killed Temporos a couple more times, getting to 39 fishing, then went ahead and fished up the cave hill I needed. We'll go back to Temporos at some point in the future, because it seems like a really interesting way of training fishing. Definitely more interesting than barbarian fishing, where you're just sitting there, dropping fish the whole time. I hate power fishing, I hate power mining, I hate power wood cutting. It just feels like such a waste to spend the time collecting stuff and just dropping it right there. So for the diamond, I think my best option will have to be the gem rocks, but I'll need 40 mining first. Old School has its own version of the Shooting Stars Distraction and Diversion, but this one can be participated in as much as you want, and you can collect as much Stardust as you want. The rewards are different, and we'll talk about those when I decide to grind those out. But all I cared about right then was easy mining XP, and the stars seemed to be the best option. I also sorted out the easy Varok tasks after mining my first star. I assumed the armor would work for the stars, but after reading a bit of the wiki, I'm pretty sure it has no effect whatsoever. Whatever. That's another XP lamp to sit in my inventory for who knows how long. You need level 30 and whatever skill you want to use it in, so... I gotta wait till we get 30 air blower, I guess. After getting my second star, and after getting 39 mining, I ventured to the Isle of Souls, domain of the best character in both RS3 and Old School. And I ran to the dungeon over to the east to get some baby dragon bones. Yeah, it probably would have been faster to go to the Taverly dungeon, but I wanted to check out this island anyway. It was added when they reintroduced Soul Wars to Old School. It's pretty neat, even if all the trees look like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. Walking beyond the demons, both greater and lesser, I found a tunnel that seemed oh so much better. Ignore the giants, they're made of fire, and avoid the skeletons, they're filled with ire. You find the dragon's teeth gnashing and mashing, and to protect their bones, they'll give you a mighty thrashing. Yeah, so 40 mining from these iron rocks outside the monastery, then I mined at the Shiloh Gem Rocks for a good 20 minutes before getting a single diamond. Hello again, Philemon. Enchant my shit. Thanks. Uh, this was just practice. This was, this was a practice try. Your max hit on Tanglefoot is based on your farming and strength level, but it seems like it's just one tenth of your farming level since I was only hitting threes. I don't think I even missed, it was just constant threes. I did have to flinch it though because it can hit twelves and quite frequently. Protect from melee would have been super useful. I gave the queen's secateurs to this caricature, completing the first fairy tale quest, then immediately moved on to fairy tale 2. It wouldn't be a farming related quest if you didn't have to wait around for no reason. Once Martin the master farmer decided it was time to let me carry on with my quest, I returned to Zanaris, popped into Fairy Nuff's ramshackled nook, and RS3 Nuff has an actual house. Using the mysterious glyphs south of the cosmic altar, we deciphered Nuff's certificate and it told us to use the fairy rings to find her and the queen. The fairy godfather gives us permission to use the rings, we step in and dial the first code, and boom, fairy rings unlocked. See you next time.